protect, progress and preserve, that's not the greatest slogan for the NCAA's next ad campaign, but that's the message it delivered on Wednesday with a pair of rulings that, on the surface, seem to be some of the most progressive the organization has made in recent memory, more, ranking college football coaches 1 to 130 schools can no longer block student-athletes intending to transfer, though the NCAA does stipulate conferences. still can make rules that are more restrictive than the national rule. It also ruled players can compete in up to four games without losing a year of eligibility. These are measures that serve to protect the student-athlete and progress into larger conversations, and it might just preserve the NCAA model for a little longer. The NCAA is often the lowest hanging fruit to grab, throw on the ground and stomp on when it comes to frustration among major U.S. sports organizations, even when compared to the pros. Most of that is based on its archaic rulebook and unwillingness to change. But these rulings are a start, a progression toward making necessary changes. We'll start with the transfer rule. The conference stipulation is interesting, and will need to be addressed in more detail. But given, the rate of transfers and graduate transfers, it's the right call. Players should be free to transfer to whatever school they want, regardless of conference affiliation or future schedules. Imagine telling an NFL player they couldn't sign as a free agent with another team in the same division. It doesn't make sense from the jump. This rule has been in the national spotlight recently in the form of Alabama graduate transfer Brandon Kennedy, who by SEC rule has been blocked from attending his preferred choices of either Auburn or Tennessee. That has put Alabama coach Nick Saban in the role of villain, but this merely shows all conferences should just waive those restrictions. It's not going to hurt the Tide or any other powerhouse in the long run. Saban is right on one count, however, either enforce the restrictions or don't use them. What's the trade-off? This likely slows the movement of allowing players to transfer without sitting out a year. The graduate transfer rule has provided a loophole anyway, and reinforces the idea that players should stick with their original commitment. Regardless, this rule as it stands benefits the student-athlete while not giving off the Wild West vibe. Again, protect, progress, preserve. More, looking ahead to 2018 season the eligibility rule is even smarter, for several reasons. It protects rosters, especially for teams that have a rash of injuries. And, given increased awareness for player safety, this allows for greater flexibility among coaches. It also works into that transfer rate. A player who might otherwise transfer could be given enough playing time late in the season to sway his decision. And, as it relates purely to on-field play, it adds at least a little intrigue for a bowl system that has seen players opt to sit out in recent seasons. If a few redshirt freshmen are allowed to play in those games, which have been reduced to meaningless exhibitions according to critics, then a few more people might tune in for the opportunity to see a prized freshman compete, or for someone to finally get their shot on the field. It also helps coaches evaluate that talent and adds intrigue for rosters. The trade-off here is that the NCAA will have to watch those players closely. Four games is a third of the season, could that lead to more upperclassmen leaving to prepare for the NFL draft? How will violators be punished? These are questions that will be addressed, but they still don't outweigh the good that comes from this ruling. Athletes have been given more power, more choices, and more opportunity to play than ever before. It's progressive. It could lead to more talks of increased transfer freedom and a potential sixth year of eligibility, all while further preparing college athletes for the next level, for those who want to take that route.
It doesn't address the pay-for-play question, which looms down the line. But these rulings show the NCAA does listen, it takes forever to make these changes, but they were made, that should help preserve the model, at least for a little longer. The NCAA still has a lot of work to do before critics stop smashing the fruit. This will save a few pieces in the meantime.